Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So today we will be discussing about JWT tokens, which are JSON web tokens, and it is primarily used for authentication. And there are certain common pitfalls that we have to watch out for. So over here, we can have an introduction to JSON tokens, which allow clients to indicate its identification, its further exchangers after authentication. And of course, here we have the second tab as well on the structure of a JWT token. So JWT token is base64, all right, encoded and consists of three main parts, which is haters, claims, or otherwise called payload, as well as signature. So in this case, we have, for example, over here, JWT hater, and we have ALG. So ALG stands for the algorithm that we'll be using for. And we have TYP, which is, of course, JSON web tokens. And we have the payload. So payload are basically information that we're putting in to the JWT, right? So over here, we have, for example, the EXP, we have the username, we have the scope, the authorities, for example, certain specific roles that the user has on the website, all right? And many, many other different details and data that we can input in. And of course, we have the encryption key and as well as the generated JWT token. So go ahead and click on it. And we have three key parts. So firstly, we have the header, all right? And this is followed by a single full stop or dot sign followed by the payload and then finally on the signature and of course we have the full jwt token over here as you can see so of course you can easily change the encryption key to say one two three four five six go ahead and click on generate jwt token and this will produce the signature okay so very quickly we understand about the structure of the jwt token and you can easily make amendments changes to both the header the payload as well as the encryption key. All right, so all those can easily be changed. The structure and the content and value of it can be changed. And here we have the basic sequence, which is pretty straightforward. So you have the browser coming in. So it could be Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, any browser from any operating system, which is then later connected to the web server. So first step is, of course, as the user posts data into the website using the login, username, as well as password. And that will create a JWT with a secret, exactly as what you saw earlier, all right, from the results. And this would return the JWT into the browser, which will be saved into your storage. And after that, all right, it sends the JWT information into the server, and the server will check and verify the signature, verify the information and data, and then respond straight to the client. So pretty straightforward, six steps for us to actually go through the entire process. And of course, everything is done in a fraction of a second. And we'll learn about how to change those certain values. So going to item number four, okay, so we have JWT signing. All right, so it says over here, each JWT sh token should at least be signed before sending it to a client. All right, so that's very important. So first of all, we have to verify signature before performing any form of actions, else we can do a lot of things. So over here, Again, we are going into the normal mode. What is normal considered as part of the activity inside this site? So here we have welcome back gas. All right, so and our assignment is to change the token you receive and become an admin user by changing the token. And once you're admin, reset the votes, okay? So we are gas right now and we have vote for your favorite. Admin lost password, get it for free, vote for your favorite, photo comment. So let's say we click onto the first tab and it says that add a gas, you're not allowed to vote. Please log in first. So we can go ahead and click onto the drop down menu. Now we can look at all the users that we can authenticate as. So I can click on Tom. So once I click on Tom, we can see the number of votes. Okay, so we got one each. And if I click onto the first one, okay, and we can go and hit on the refresh button. I can click on the second one. And of course, based on the results, it seems like Tom has already voted. So if I click on Jerry, Okay, if I click on Jerry, again, we're seeing one vote each. So I can go ahead and click over here. For example, I can click on vote now and we can scroll back down again. And this becomes three votes. Okay, so we can see all this different data. And of course, we're seeing that Jerry could vote multiple times. And of course, we also have Sylvester. All right, so we can go ahead and click on to get it for free. And again, we can look at all these different details and data or what's going on in the site. So what we're going to do next is actually on the right side. Okay, so there is this part called reset votes. So we can reset all the counters in all of the tabs. So go ahead and click on that. And it gives us a prompt. It says only an admin user can reset the votes. So what we're going to do now is to go to the top right corner of your browser. 
And of course, in this case, we're on Firefox and we can click under Web Developer and we can click under the Storage Inspector. Okay, under Storage Inspector, we can look at the session. Okay, so over here, we have cookies information and we have session. All right, so if I click on to say a change to Tom, all right, this would change, for example, the values of the access token. And if I change it to guest, all right, that would remove the access token as you can see from here. Okay, so very, very quickly, we could understand about how the access token is being issued by the web application system to the user or to the browser. And what we can do next is we can click on Tom, for example, and we can go under the network tab. So we're collecting data and now I'm going to delete it all. Okay, so I'm going to click under reset votes. Click on that and we have a votings over here. So go ahead and click on it and we show us more information about it. So we have the response and it says lesson completed false and it says feedback. Only an admin user can reset the votes. Okay, so we see those details and data over there. Okay, so we can look at all these different details that's been sent into the site and so on. So we can go ahead and right click, edit and resend. Okay, so over here, we can look at the details. So we have the access token information. We have all these different data points that we can look at. So go ahead and copy the following, right? Which is the access token. Copy the information here. And we can go into this website, for example, base64 format. Okay, so we can actually decode it. Click on the decode. And we can actually paste the information here. And first of all, we'll definitely need to be able to paste the data right here. Okay, so I can go ahead and copy these details. All right, paste it here. Click under decode. And we get the following results, which is, of course, this is the hater information of JWT. So here we have an algorithm, HS512. Okay, and of course, if I go ahead and paste the second item over here, or we can copy everything in, and we can paste it all in, copy, and we can paste it all in. All right, so again, we are decoding all those information that we're getting from the cookies. So here we have algorithm. Let me zoom in a little more so it's easier for you to see. So we have algorithm, HS512, we have IAT, we have admin is false, and we have user Tom. Okay, and then followed by the rest of it, which is the signature. So in this case, we understand the structure of what is being saved into our web application browser. So we're understanding what's being sent from the web application server to the browser and how it is being sent over into the web application system. And of course, in this case, we have admin as false. Okay, so we need to change this. And at the same time, okay, there are certain things that we need to do as well. And that is, of course, trying to change the algorithm. Okay, so there is a way for us to actually remove the algorithm entirely, which help us remove also the signature. Okay, so that will be another way for us to actually set those details and data. All right, so first of all, okay, we can go back over here and we can set the algorithm to null. Okay, and of course, we can see on the second tab, we have the IAT. So I can copy the IAT, right click, copy, go back and paste the information here. And we have admin true and user Tom. So what I will do now is to actually encode it. So let's encode the first segment, which is algorithm as null. So go ahead and go back to base64decode.org. Click under encode, okay? And then we can paste over here and click onto encode. And this will produce the results of the base64 format. So we can copy this, go back to your favorite editor, and we can paste the information here and put a single full stop. So this is to demarcate, all right, or to add a delimiter into the payload. All right, so here we have, for example, over here, we have the algorithm is null. And then we got to copy this information here, copy it. All right, paste it into the base64 encode.org. Click under encode. And we got the details. And we can copy the information from here. So you have to ignore the last two equal sign on it. All right, go back to your favorite editor. Paste the information. So we got all these details right here. We can copy the details. Go back to web code. All right, we can pause the collection of data and do a right click edit and resend, which we are already doing now. Okay, so we can delete away all of those inside the access token tab under cookies. All right, so once we delete all of it, all we got to do is paste the information that we have now crafted to be sent over 
into the site. So go in and do a right click, paste it, followed by full stop. Okay. So remember to put a full stop. We need at least two full stops. All right. One for the header and one for the payload. So once you have all these details running, you can go ahead and click under send. Okay. So once it is sent, you can go ahead and click onto the details. All right. So we can look at the response and it says over here, congratulations, you have successfully completed the assignment. So we have made a reset into the database system to reset all of the vote counts. So if you do a refresh here, again, we can do a reset immediately of all of the vote counts. All right. So once again, I hope you've learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you like what you've just watched, remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.